Hey everyone, I'm Michael D, and today we are going to be looking at some examples of using the equation V equals D over T. So this equation, V equals D over T, is a way to measure velocity when we know distance and time. So I'm going to work through three different examples and show you how we can apply this equation, and hopefully at the end of these three examples you'll feel pretty good about this. As I read the question, I'm going to underline the key pieces of information. Solve the average velocity. So we have been asked to solve the average velocity, that's the V, of a bus that traveled 200 kilometers, that's the distance that we traveled, in a period of four hours. That gives us the time. So we can go ahead and set up our equation, V equals D over T, and we know that we're looking for the V value, this average velocity. And we know that the D, our distance traveled, is 200 divided by the time that the trip took. In this case, 4 hours. So we head on over to our calculators and we do 200 divided by 4. And we get that our velocity equaled 50 but what units? In this case, you look at the units of the distance and the units of the time, and we can see kilometers, and we can see hours, and clearly I am Canadian because we use kilometers. And we do kilometers divided by hours. And that's our final answer. That's example number one. Let's go down and look at a second example. In this example, we are riding on a sled that is moving at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second. We're going to underline that. That's our velocity. Velocity of 15 meters per second. This time we know it. For a time interval of 20 seconds, we also know our time. And the question asks, how far? That means this question is asking us to solve the distance. So we write our equation, V equals D over T. We're going to fill in what we know. 15 is our velocity. This equals D for our distance. And we don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for. Divided by our time, which is 20. In order to solve the distance, we need to get rid of this 20 on the bottom. If you've made it this far, science complete. It's time for math. To get rid of a number in the denominator, we're going to need to multiply both sides by this 20. On the right-hand side, the 20s will cancel out, becoming a 1. On the left-hand side, we multiply them together. 20 times 15 is going to equal 300, which will equal our distance. How do we decide the units that are going to be on this distance? We look up at our velocity. In this case, it's meters per second, so we must have just traveled 300 meters. And that's the second type of example that could use this equation. One more to go. We're going to head down to a third example, and this time we're going on a road trip. We are going on a road trip in our brand new Jeep. Watch for little sentences like this. They don't actually do anything to the problem. They're kind of fillers or distractors. So don't get caught up because there's nothing in this first sentence that's going to be used in our calculations. We are traveling at an average velocity of 120 kilometers per hour. Watch for that word average velocity or constant velocity. That's how you know you're using this equation. V equals D over T. Our velocity is 120 kilometers per hour. The road trip will be 800 kilometers long. That's a distance. The question is, how long will it take? That's our time. We need to solve our time in this case. So we write out our equation. V equals D over T. We're going to fill into our equation what we know. We know the velocity. That's 120. This is going to equal our distance, that's 800, and it's going to be divided by our time, 
oh no, what have you done to us? Why did you put a variable into the denominator? Do you not like us? If you've gotten this far, science complete. It's time for some math. In order to get rid of a variable, if it's in the denominator, that means the bottom of a fraction, we need to multiply both sides by this variable. It's the same way that we did it in question number two. You just have to multiply something on both sides to get it off the bottom there. In this case, the t's will cancel out, becoming 1, and on the left, we'll have t multiplied by 120. This becomes a 120 t equals 800. We're almost there. We still want our time all by itself, and by the power of algebra, we can do that by dividing both sides by 120. The 120 over 120 cancels out, and it leaves us with t equals 800 divided by 120, which is 6.67. 6.67 what? We go back and look in the equation, and we can see that the time involved in our equation is hours. So it's going to take 6.67 hours. And these are the three different ways that questions could be asked that would use V equals D over T. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much, and looking forward to seeing you next time.